I'd like to demonstrate to you um, the operation of the Hopfield network. So this is a, some code that I had alluded to in, uh, in the last video. In fact, you saw those uh, pictures of letters. So you'll see those later on. So I'll make this code available to you. It demonstrates Hopfield networks. A bit of preamble. I've got some functions here to get me started, some useful things. In particular is this Hamming function here. So Hamming uh, distance is a way to measure the difference between two binary uh, strings or two, two digital um, pieces of information. It basically counts the number of differences, the number of mismatched bits. Okay, so here's a toy data set. And you can see it's uh, 16, it comes from a 16 dimensional space and there are um, four different samples. So these are the four different memories that I want my net, my Hopfield network with 16 nodes to remember. There are 16 neurons in my network and I want these four states to become stable. Um, <clears throat> the, there's an, an ability to try uh, using random data sets as well, but let's use these, uh, this pre-cooked one. So these are actually orthogonal. You can actually work it out up here. They, they are orthogonal um, samples. And so if I were to compute the connection weights, this is the formula right out of the notes. Uh, X transpose X divided by, well, I'm using little n here, but I use big M there. Um, by the way, in the notes, I'm using column vectors. Here, I'm using row vectors. It's all good. We're adults here. <clears throat> so it computes um, the connection weights and, and biases. I didn't sh talk about the biases, how to compute them, but um, you could probably convince yourself that adding up, it, the, the bias for a node is basically the average um, activity of it throughout those different um, memories. So there are a couple different ways to compute it. Um, I show both ways and I'm just showing here that the maximum difference between them, it basically computes the same matrix. We can look at the connection weight matrix at 16 by 16, whatever that means. So along the diagonal here is actually a bunch of zeros. Okay. And I'll show you that multiplying um, our memories, our, our, the, the data set by this matrix gives us a multiple. It doesn't change the, the vectors, it just changes the length of the vectors, it doesn't change the direction. So down here, this bottom part is my data set, it's x, and up here I'm showing w times x, and you can see all the signs are the same, like a minus three here and a minus one there. So anyway, minus one there. You can see that it just, it doesn't change the direction. All right, a couple more functions. This computes a hop field energy. I give it the connection weights and biases and the state of my network, and it uh, gives me the energy. You'll notice that I've got, I'm using a plus sign here instead of a minus sign like I did in the notes. That doesn't matter. All it's gonna do is f flip the sign of, of B, but it, it doesn't change any of the fundamental behaviors. And that's why there's a mind. So this is the update formula. This is the formula I use to update my x values. And you can see I'm running it through this threshold function that I defined up above. Again, there's a minus sign here. That's just because I uh, the, my b's are negative of what they were in the notes. Okay, so I've got my energy function and my update function. I can use those. Really quick joke. I like meta humor, which is sort of like jokes about jokes. Um, this is kind of meta. Um, you know how people say uh, uh, when they're spelling something out like bomb has a silent B at the end or K has a silent knife has a silent K at the beginning. Um, I like to say uh, my name is Jeff with a silent and invisible K. Okay, so let me generate a sample here. So this is class uh, a data from my data set, it's a class one vector, but it's got three errors in it. Now I'm going to iterate it in my network. I'm going to set my network state to that corrupted sample, and then I'm going to iterate my network until it settles down to some equilibrium. It doesn't always settle to an equilibrium, but uh, hopefully it will. Th these are basically two versions of the same code. This one calls the update function, 
whereas this one kind of uh, uh, hard codes the, the same stuff. Okay, so this is the Hamming distance uh, between iterations. So you can see after a while we seem to be kind of going back and forth between two vectors um, and uh, that, that differ by four. Four bits keep changing over time. Well, let's see where we are. So we're closest to the sample one. Now our, 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 our input that we started with, our initial st network state was a corrupted version of uh, class one. So that's the, that's the one we're closest to in Hamming distance. Let me rerun it, starting from a different initial state. Um, class zero with one error. And so you can see after one iteration, we, we basically fixate on something we're not changing anymore. And you can see the um, that the network state I converge to is identical to uh, my class one training vector. We'll do one more example. Class two with two errors. And again, it, it converges very quickly. And you can see that the Hamming distance between my network state and the, that um, vector in my, my training set is zero. Okay, let's look at a more interesting uh, data set. So here I've just got these four basic letter images. They're basically vectors, but the shape of them, we can sort of see something. So A, B, C, D. And these, each square is just a plus one or minus one. And so these are vectors with, um, I guess, 36 elements. Now you can see that they're not totally orthogonal. When I take the inner product, um, they're largely orthogonal, but there's a lot of overlap. Some of them have um, inner product with other elements as high as eight. But that's okay. So we connect, we compute our connection weights and biases. Now let's create a corrupted version of one of those images. So in this one, it basically deletes the bottom part here, and then it adds a couple errors in the top part. So this looks like the E, but there's an extra blip over here, and it's removed the bottom couple rows. So let's see if we can reconstruct that. I'm gonna use two different methods. In the synchronous updating, we basically, uh, it's basically what I described in the lectures where you, you take all your, your network state and at, all at once you replace your network state with updated network states. You compute all the input currents and then update all the, the, act, the network node activations. Alternatively, you can do it asynchronously. This is the way it was sort of initially proposed where you randomly select one neuron out of the 36 and you update it according to its input. And you just, you randomly uh, visit the neurons and update one at a time until you sort of, uh, until things stop changing. So that's the asynchronous. And uh, my goal here is to show that they both work. This is showing the Hamming distance. Um, they both produce a, a network state that's Hamming distance of zero from the, uh, the fourth input. And so this is showing the network state that it converges to and it matches. This doesn't always work. Let me generate a different one. So this is class three, has nine errors in it. So I run through this stuff, synchronous and asynchronous, and um, it produce, reproduces it again. Okay, let's try a different one, one more. Class two, so this is the letter B. No, this is letter C, but there are 11 errors in it. Let's see if they can fix those 11 errors. Yeah, it seems to have. Beautiful. So this is a demonstration of Hopfield networks working.